Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we are going to discuss the issue of suicides in bodybuilding. In particular, we're going to mention steroids and what they can do to your mental health. I think this is an important topic because I myself have suffered from mental health issues, and if there was a way I could solve them or prevent anyone else from getting them, I would help them do that. The issue with this topic in particular is defining which came first, whether it was the steroids that caused the mental health issues or the mental health issues that caused the steroid user or person to use steroids. As always, we find that it's multifactorial and that there is always a contribution of the two, so that person is already predisposed to using steroids or someone who with mental health problems is already predisposed to using steroids, and steroids themselves might also cause mental health problems, which causes the individual to have these mental health problems. So it's usually a contribution of all factors. It's commonly mentioned on forums that if you yourself suffer from mental health problems that you should probably avoid using steroids just because they are known to exacerbate this. Furthermore, if this topic doesn't interest you because mental health isn't your main concern, just remember that if you do suffer from mental health, you're up, you won't have the optimal mindset to go to the gym and you won't make the optimal gains. So there I'm trying to sell you into watching this video, because I think it's a very important topic. So let's look at different compounds, well we'll only mention a few because there are so many different steroids and what they can do to your mental health. So not all steroids have been shown to cause psychiatric disturbances, things such as TRT has been shown to improve mental health, especially in hypogonadal males treated with TRT, Provirin itself has been used in treating depression, and anecdotally something like Dianabol gives the individual a euph euphoric effect. But obviously not all compounds are good and not all compounds favour your mental health, and it's kind of a no-brainer but or known by, men, uh, by many individuals in the community, but 19 nor testosterone derivatives such as Tren and Nandrolone have been demonstrated to be worse for your mental health, and it's anecdotally reported all over the forums. The issue though is there's a lot of literature that is weak and lacking when it comes to analysing steroids and their mental health effects. However, compounds like Winstrol and Nandrolone have been studied in depth and have been displayed to have quite potent effects on your mental health. So we're just going to go through a few studies and see what these studies say. So in the first study, this was one of the first I knew about, it was where they treated rats with stenozolol, which is Winstrol, at a dose of 5 mg per kg per day. This is actually, if you convert it to a human equivalent, it's quite an accurate demonstration of what humans would use. They compared this to placebo and did it over 4 weeks. After the four week period, they euthanized the rats and they looked at various neurochemicals in different parts of the brain. And of interest, it was found that dopamine was decreased in the prefrontal cortex, so that's like the cortex that's important for, they say it's, you know, your personality, your personality traits, things like that. And a decrease in dopamine in this area has been associated with things like anhedonia, which is where is a symptom of depression where you don't care about anything. And it was also demonstrated that so serotonin decreases globally all over the brain. So obviously this makes you hypothesize what Winstrol could do to a human brain. Since this was done in rats, it's not always translated exactly into human models, but it's a guideline. Um, so the, a similar effect was displayed with Nandrolon or DECA. In this particular study, they noted that DECA had very 
anxiogenic effects, not anxiolytic. Anxiogenic means anxiety-producing behavioral effects. And they postulated that this could be due to the stimulation of the androgen receptor in a particular part of the brain, which causes adrenergic signaling, i.e. adrenaline signaling. So it spikes your adrenaline and your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight response, making you tend to be more ang anxious or uh, it predisposes you to more panic attacks. And it's quite known that other compounds such as anadrol are quite potent in this, uh, in this regard also. Anadrol itself is used pre a powerlifting contest in order to stimulate the nervous system and make the individual more aggressive and pull heavier weight. Furthermore, more studies in nandrolone decanoate have demonstrated that it impacts opioid concentration, so the feel-good hormones, as well as other things such as ta tachykinin levels in the brain, and this has been associated with depression, aggression, and things like that. So we have a few animal models or mechanistic data models that demonstrate how steroids could possibly cause the, this effect. But does this translate into humans? Well, there's a problem here. In humans, it's incredibly difficult to prove without control of many confounding variables, i.e. the variables that would predispose someone to mental health problems, without proper full psychiatric evaluation prior to the treatment, during the treatment, and after the treatment. Very few studies in general, besides those looking at psychiatric medicines, actually do this. Furthermore, these studies that are available don't really control how much the individual can take of the steroid and which steroid they use and in which concentrations. They just know which steroids have been consumed in general and they make assumptions on all of these. So this would say that most of the studies are correlational and not causation. That's because most of them are observational. There are not many randomized control trials looking at this effect. And even so, proving that the steroid is causing a mental health effect without like hardcore evidence besides just the person reporting that they are anxious or something is incredibly difficult to prove. That's why these studies are poor. But there is no doubt in medical literature that there is something, whether it be the steroids themselves or something that a steroid user has in their body, that causes them to have higher levels of psychiatric problems. So I'm going to refer to this literature review, which looked at many different papers in steroid users and non-steroid users and compared the different effects. So they postulated that in humans it was through the opioid pathway that these steroids caused the, their psychiatric effects. And they found that in general there was no doubt that steroid users had significantly higher levels of reported psychiatric disturbances and this was, the p-value was incredibly significant. There was much higher or reports of things like mania, hypomania, which is essentially mania, but for a shorter duration, anxiety and depression were all very common in the steroid user as compared to their non-steroid using counterparts. And these were in both athletes using and athletes not using steroids. So confounding variables were slightly controlled there. So in general, from this study, it does tend to suggest that steroids do have an effect on your mental health. And for those thinking testosterone is the safest, well, in an actual pretty good study, a randomized placebo-controlled trial, they tested varying dosages for different durations, and they found that at 600 milligrams a day, or the higher the dose of testosterone used, the more the users reported manic symptoms. So not only does the compound play a big role, but also the dosage does, which obviously isn't very surprising. 
So in general, although these studies are really poor, there is no doubt that there is something that causes steroid users to have more psychiatric problems. And I think it's important to take this issue seriously as anyone who has dealt with a mental health problem they know how much of a disturbance these issues can cause in their life and just the, the sheer distress it causes is enough for anyone who has suffered from them never want, uh, uh, to avoid anything that may exacerbate it. Furthermore, it's also thought that if I'm not depressive I won't be suicidal, but that's not the only thing. Depression, whilst suicide is higher in depressive episodes, it's any individual with a psychiatric problem that has a higher risk of suicide. It's, for example, if you're, feel, if you're anxious and you're feeling panic or you're just unnerved or you're just, you have this irrational fear all the time but you can't get rid of it, sometimes it becomes so severe and you become so debilitated by this condition that you would do anything to get rid of this and that's why something like suicide could possibly occur. So what do you do? How do you prevent it? How do you treat it? So ideally, if you have any previous mental health problems, it's best to stay away from steroids, period. Just because they do exacerbate them through a variety of mechanisms as we outlined. But if you have to use them because you have extreme body dysmorphia or something, you just I don't know why you want to use them, but if you have to use them, it's best to use moderate dosages and stay away from compounds such as 19 nors. Furthermore, it's best if you are currently experiencing major depressive, a major depressive episode or something like that whilst on a cycle, it's best to go down to a cruise and perhaps seek treatment with a medical doctor. Furthermore, before, before you start your steroid cycle, it's best to ensure you have adequate social support, that, you have, uh, that you're not all by yourself and you have someone you can talk to. Because I know it, it, a lot of people say it isn't manly, but it, sharing your feelings does have a very significant effect on your mental health and just how you feel at that moment. Those are just some easy, implementable tips that I would suggest to you. However, let's look and see if there are any specific steroid user treatments for these conditions. Well, in the study that was similar to the one that looked at Winstrol in rats, they looked at combining Winstrol with a tricyclic antidepressant, so a medication used in depression. It's not first line anymore, but it used to be used quite commonly. And they, dis they displayed in the study that the combination of the tricyclic antidepressant with the Winstrol actually attenuated those negative effects that we saw Winstrol had on your dopamine and serotonin. Furthermore, if we look at actual human studies, it's found that if you have prolonged depression after stopping a steroid cycle, um, obviously you assume it's suppression, but even in the case of someone who's blasting and cruising, they, after a blast, although their testosterone normal, uh, levels are normal because they're on a cruise, they're not having this, you know, stimulus they get from the blast, and this can lead to depression. So if the hormones are not the issue, it's best to correct those first, but if they're not the issue, they found that supplementing or using or treating your, uh, being treated with something like fluoxetine or Prozac is best way to prevent this feeling of depression after withdrawing from the steroids. Furthermore, if you're suffering from mania, which is common in Trembolone, it's best to use a short course of an anxio not an anxiolytic, an antipsychotic, and to discontinue the trend, because prolonged psychosis is in fact damaging to the brain and predisposes you to further psychosis in the future. Furthermore, if you suffer from panic or anxiety when on steroids, it's best to use a short course of benzodiazepine at a reasonable dose, that prescribed by your doctor, and just to 
you know, withhold those symptoms for now, and hopefully you're coming to the end of your cycle and you can come off and hopefully everything corrects. If it doesn't correct and you still have these symptoms, it's perhaps suggested to use an SSRI, ser selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, or a tricyclic antidepressant. Furthermore, if you are seriously or severely being affected by withdrawal from your steroids, it's best to taper down the testosterone doses while using something like clonidine.